I took over the responsibility in the in church. Just a few weeks later, a few weeks later, Pastor Chris sent for me. And in between that time, there was a program in the stadium. Surulere. It was the biggest program Christ Embassy ever had. And it was put in my care. Night of Bliss. That was a program. And they, listen to me. If your gift is not challenged in the work of God, you've not started. Whatever gift you have, and you have not come to a place where you are challenged beyond comprehension, beyond your understanding, beyond your ability, that's where grace comes to work. I mean, but before that time, I've never powered a program in a crusade. And here I was. They told me that we're having a night of bliss in Surulere. They said, arrange the equipment for it. I said, what? They said, yes, I should organize equipment for it. To compound it, the CE's members were against me. Because they didn't think that what I work, whatever I plan to do will work. They just say I know about books, that equipment is not my area. The CEC members were against me. Honestly. Sometimes you don't know the opposition you have to deal with to be able to come up. There is no destiny without a Goliath. And your place in Christ is what will give you cover. Sorry, what will bring you over the Goliath? It's not your mental ability. It's not your strength of arm. Every Goliath will require Jehovah to put you over him. It was like that from the beginning. It was the Lord that cursed the serpent and reduced the strength of the serpent so that man can bruise the head of the serpent because God says so. Amen. He said the seed of the woman will do what? We bruise your head. God submitted the serpent under us. The same way he brought Goliath under David. It will still take God to bring the Goliath in your destiny under your feet. And then in the program, I went to Germany. I did some work. I brought the sound engineer. I brought the sound engineer. I brought the sound engineer from Germany. Their best, Ingo Hash. You remember him? We came together. He came into the stadium. He looked. He said, Mr. Alpha, is this the place for the program? He said, yes. He said, my, 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 my. He said, this is not a church. He said, this is not a church. He said to me, you made a mistake. I said, why? He said, when you came to Germany, you would have told us that this is a rock concert. He said, the equipment we prescribe for you will not do. That was my first shock. He said, you know what? He said, let me tell you, our idea of a church is a priest in a Catholic church. He said, God bless you. That's the way he did in the stadium. He said, but what you are doing here is not church. This is a rock concert. You gave us the wrong information. He brought out his phone. He called Mr. Klaus Seitz, their market, managing director, their marketing director. He said, he said, we don't have enough equipment for this program. The man said, why? Is it not a church? He looked around. He said to him, the stadium is full. Klaus Seitz said, we... What stadium? Stadium. My leg was wobbling. Are you hearing me? My first outdoor challenge was National Stadium. We ordered X array tops. We didn't add subs. We didn't add enough subs. Because if you thought that it is just a speech and a preach, and they're reading a Bible, and everybody go home. So when Ingo Hash came and saw the mass choir, I said, what is this? I said, I said, no, I said, no is that the mass choir? He said, <laughs> he said, for this? I said, yes. The man was afraid. His face turned red. We started looking for sub from all Christ Embassy churches around, starting from headquarters to a solo. Everything they call sub, we gathered it together and all that. The man looked at him and he said, this is... <laughs> he laughed. Where did they get this from? He said, this is an empty box. Said, you, know, you know, experience, any experience, listen to me, any, any experience that almost takes your life will always make your life. And if you have not come to that point in service, in ministry, where it almost took your life, 
your life cannot be made because we are shaped by challenges. And I want you to get it from the beginning that many of you, we have to face Goliath. In the process of this training, there will be practical. You will be handling practical. Amen. And you don't come back with stories because some exams only happen once in a lifetime. If David had failed with Goliath, nobody would have heard about him again. True or false? Some exams, you only sit it once in life. And that is why we are going to sit it. You don't play you prepare yourself well. Amen. Amen. And then we walked and walked and walked and walked and walked and walked. By 1 a.m. after 1, suddenly the whole place was a bit changed. That was the night where I said, no, for the flowing day program. I said, why is everywhere? Just everybody disappearing and looking. Lo and behold, from a distance, Pastor Chris was just walking quietly. We see his members. Hey, that was when I know that people can dive when they see Pastor Chris. <laughs> All the people around me just this evaporated was the best word. Pew, pew, pew. Because nobody wants to put their head in the, in the equipment. I remember that Pastor Chris just walked gently towards me and then I went to meet him. He laughed. He said, Brother Alpha, what are you doing? I said, we are setting up. He looked at the speakers left and right. He said, these things, will they serve the whole place? I say, yes, sir. <laughs> Pastor Chris laughed. Reverend Tom, Reverend Ray, they were at the back. If I knew, so I said, I know what, I know they will come back. Pastor Chris said, Brother, are you sure this thing will serve the whole place? He said, don't you have more speakers to scatter all over? I said, no, sir. He said, are you sure this thing will work? I said, yes, sir. He said, okay, okay, it's okay, continue. Then uh, I showed him Ingo Hash, my team and all that. He said, he said, continue, continue, continue. God bless you. When Pastor Chris was leaving, he went back to the stage we had built, and that place we built the stage then. He stood and looked at the speakers again. National Stadium is massive when nobody's there. Are you hearing me? <laughs> Pastor Chris looked again. He, said, he left. After he left, after a while, I saw the generals coming. I said, now my head is about to be cut off. <laughs> Reverend Tom, <laughs> Reverend Ray, and the rest of the kids. He said, Brother, if I come here. <laughs> you told Pastor this will work. I said, yes. Sir. He said, go and get some speakers put in the middle. I said, sir, this will work. He said, listen to me. Go and get some speakers. I will tell the churches to bring their speakers. I said, it will work, sir. Reverend Tom was not convinced. I was not at all that even in the CEO's member with Pastor, before the program started that day, he was still saying that he has told me to bring, and I refuse. So he registered that so that if he fails, my head will go. Praise the Lord. Why am I sharing this? This is not a church setting. This is a classroom. If I don't give you real life examples, you won't think that your pastor has gone through anything. All this one, they talk about you, somebody was against you. You don't have where you, the whole of your pastors were against you. They say it will not work. And then the day of the program, as Pastor Chris mounted the, 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 uh, the pulpit, he took the microphone. He said, if you can hear me right there, shout hallelujah. There was a big hallelujah. He said, if you can hear me right there, shout hallelujah. As he was saying that, I was saying, Lord, <laughs> deliver me from the altar of sacrifice. He said, if you can hear me right there, shout hallelujah. He said, if you can hear me right there, immediately everybody can pass on Chris, busted that into worship. He began to worship. The joy filled his heart. Are you hearing me? Without a word, miracles were happening <laughs> everywhere in the stadium. The first crusade. Miracles. It's on record. It's there. Night of bliss. Even outside the stadium. People start, yes, on the, on the flyover outside the stadium, people sat there. And we had raised the speaker about three, four, three meters up or four meters. We raised the speaker left and right. 
And what the speaker we used was called X array. Even before this line array came, as far back as that, over maybe 20, 20, 20 years ago, 20 years ago, we had introduced X array in Christ Timbers before any church would hear about it. And then we had that program. One thing happened. A Christ, uh, sorry, a house on the rock pastor was in his house. Odualegba Road. He was hearing the sound. Now he came to the stadium to say, what equipment is doing this job? That was how I met him. And now he told Pastor Paul, Pastor Paul called me. I went to see Pastor Paul. Pastor Paul said, T.D. Jake is coming into the country. I need equipment. He said, whatever Christ Embassy bought, add more to me. Christ Embassy had done a deal of $120,000 then to get those equipment. Now Pastor Paul did $140,000, $150,000. What will almost take you ahead will also raise your head. And that's how our news spread about what I like. That where the church, the, the company that handled sound in stadium and people heard outside stadium, we got phone calls from everywhere. And that was the introduction of what I like for all your praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It was a different kind of training. I got it in Germany. It was free, but I took it seriously. Are you hearing me? It was free. This training is free, but it can change your life. Praise the Lord. Remember, if you are not equipped, you will not contribute anything to the body of Christ. Because God said, my people have to serve for lack of knowledge. He said, because you reject knowledge, I will also reject you as being priest unto me. That's what God said. Training you is for you not to suffer rejection with God. If you have that as a mindset, you will take this training serious. You will go through your notes. You will study like never before. Praise the Lord. It's children that are tossed about by diverse teaching and doctrines and all that. Those that are matured understand that even the best man of God can fail. Even the best man of God can make mistakes. Are you hearing me? And when people are watching you on stage, every eye is on you, you will, you will make a mistake. I have a book. I have a book called Christianity in Crisis. I wouldn't recommend that you read that book because you may not go to church again. Don't buy it. Are you hearing me? I have the book. And that's why I will not tell you the author. And I said, don't buy it. We had a meeting with Pastor Papa Adeboye. We are blessed to have a meeting one-on-one. -on -one. I, I pray you, don't let anything. Don't let your education take you away from God. Don't let the job take you away. Don't let your husband, don't let your wife take you away. Don't let the children. Ah. Some people worship their children that God gave to them. They worship them. They adore their children. Some people adore their husband. Some people adore their wife. Listen, love your children, love your family, but love God more because at the end of the day, their destiny is in the hand of God. Amen. You can give them good education does not mean that they, no, it does not mean that they will be able to make it. But God can make them make it. Praise the Lord. And so when the Bible says, love God, love God, love God, like Moses said, he said that it may be well with you. I had a story uh, on something that just happened recently. A, a, a lady was kidnapped, I think, yeah, in this nation. A lady was kidnapped. 
and the mother was told, the mother was told that your daughter has been kidnapped. The mother started laughing. She came to a church. He said, Lord, they don't carry your picking. She was dedicated on this altar to you. To you. And they carried her. Lord, they carried your picking. Bring her back. Bring her back. Your daughter dedicated on this altar. And whoever carried her carried your own. And so you have to bring her back. And I heard that those that carried her as they were deaf, and they said, this one said we are carrying. What will you do with her? Huh? Said this one is bad market. They stopped the vehicle and pushed her out of the vehicle. They said she's bad market. Because your God goes ahead of the kidnappers. Amen. That was, that was a woman with wisdom. She remembered that the name of the Lord is upon the daughter. He said the daughter was dedicated upon this altar. He said, God, not my picking, it's your picking. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I wish many more fathers, mothers, would talk like that confidently. Confident about their children. <laughs> oh. The reason why many struggle to love the Lord is because you've not seen the wonders of God. You've not seen the wonders of God. If you will experience, if you will experience one encounter of the Lord, if you will get God to act for you just one time, one time, one time, it will shock you. If you come to a place where you move God into action on your behalf, just in one circumstances, you will know that truly God is a wonder-working God. You have not dared God. That's the problem. You have not dared Jehovah. Where you said, I don't care. Esther said, if I perish, I perish, but I'm going forward. The three Hebrew children said, even though they throw us into the fire, we will not bow before their God. You have not come to that place. Daniel said, let them throw me into the lion den. I will stand for Jehovah. You have not come to that point. That's where the problem is. And that's why Moses is saying to them, he said, listen, listen. Love the Lord, your God, with all your heart. He said, your destiny is in loving God. Your future, your prosperity, your increase is in how you love the Lord. You know why we pray so long? Because we are trying first to please God with all our lawlessness. And so we pray long, we fast long. Any child that is obedient to the father, to the mother, doesn't need to ask much. Before even he asks, it is given. True or false? Except the wicked parents. No, that is the truth. That is the truth. with him. Early in the morning we went to redeem camp and we went to take some things to him. And he looked at the books we brought to bless him. He said something. He said there was a one book, one book he read. He said he wished he never opened that book. Papa Adeboye, he told us, we were only about three of us in that meeting with him. He said he opened that book and read it. He said he had wished he never opened it. And that's why when people go to internet, I, remember what I told you? I told you, unlimited freedom is lawlessness. Yeah. Unlimited what? Freedom. Some of you say, somebody, pastor is trying to control your liberty. Pastor is trying to control that. I told you, what you call control is what Bible call adoption. If you adopt a child, you control the child. To learn the ways of the family. Praise the Lord. After the morning prayer, I was saying something here. It sounds as a joke, but it wasn't a joke. I said, in this ministry, we should make sure that wedding is as cheap as possible. Hello? QED was laughing, and I was serious. When you want to marry here, you need to sit down with me or a team, and we'll make sure that your wedding does not exceed 300,000, 500,000. With, with, with traditional wedding, with church wedding, with court wedding, all put together, 300 to 500,000. Take it or leave it. Oh, now you are green. When we come to the, listen, when we go to the parents of the, of, the, of the lady, we have come to pay her bride price, to pay her bride price. 
They give us a long list. We say, thank you for this list. God bless this list. They say, Mama, Papa. We didn't say we are buying your daughter. We have 50,000 to pay. Take it. God will bless you, Paul. And I'm serious. If you will not take it, we'll go to another shop. Um, QED, tell your parents to accept our prize. Or we go to another village. Amen? He said, Papa, God, take, God will bless you if you take. We are, not, we are not buying her. She's not a slave. Who. We are just marrying her. Amen? And besides, she's still your daughter when we marry her. 50,000, package it. And then she said they will, not attack, they will not take. Then John came with a good idea. That will transfer the money to the account. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Seriously, we we'll bread price paid in full, transfer it to the account. And they will not know the account where it came from. Bread price paid in full. I was serious when I was saying it. I will not preside over a wedding that costs three million, four million, when you have not done anything in church. Are you hearing me? If you really want to honor God with your wedding, your wedding day, please, I will give you land. You will build bungalow for us for four bedroom where we can put guests when we have program. We will put it, Brother Bright, donation on his wedding day to the glory of God. Are you hearing me? You build it. On Sunday, you come with your wife. We stand here. We bless you. We join you put together. And then they will bring the rice we cook on Super, on super Sunday and give it to them to eat. Praise the Lord. We know. Let's. Madness have to stop in the church. Are you hearing me? Madness have to do what? Stop. Which one that you got married and you are in debt? Is that the way to start a family? No, is that the way? You marry and you are in debt. Any woman that you marry bring you to return to the sender. I was okay before you came. Now you have come. After I said I do, I'm paying debt of five million. Please go back to your parents. When I finish, you come back. If I still want you. Amen. White wedding is not scriptural. White wedding is not in the Bible. White wedding does have not have anything to do with church. White wedding is a pagan culture. And I have it recorded and the date and when it started, White Wedding, in 1490 something. That was when White Wedding start, started. Queen Victoria, married to Prince Albert, was the first person to wear, to wear White Wedding. It has nothing to do with church. So all this nonsense, I want to have a big White Wedding. Bring that big budget to me. I will use it well. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Say we are learning. I want to have a big white wedding. When was the last time you had a big project in church? When was the last time? I'm waiting for all of you, sons and daughters, come before me. You tell me my parents will not accept. My parents will not accept. When I marry, the parents did not accept. She's here. When I marry, the parents didn't agree. In the church, they refused to come. Mother and father refused to come. And they said, who is giving over this? The cousin that is a Christian came. She said, father and mother is not around. The cousin came. Is it not true? Uh-huh. It does not have to be necessary your father that will give you a marriage. I didn't have any father and mother to give her a marriage. And so we have to improvise. We have to look for, uh, look for somebody, a Christian, a, 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 a cousin, right? And she brought, she brought, she brought her foot. So he brought her foot. You know, on the wedding day. When we were about to start wedding, they look around. My best man did not, was not around. <laughs> Everything that can happen to a man on a wedding day, I've already gone through it. So when I'm talking, I know what I'm talking about. My best man was not around. A close friend like this. He was fighting with a wife at home. <laughs> on my wedding day. Are you hearing me? My pastor looked at me. Apostle Lance Matubuko, he looked at me. We looked. Who in the crowd, in the church, would be a, a best man for me? Are you hearing me? Everything that can happen to a man on a wedding day, I went through it for you. 
So you don't need to go through any shame. I have taken all the shame. No, are you hearing me? No. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Don't tell me that you must have a white wedding. For what? Were you born with white? It was when we hired, a, we got a man, a man from the church that was sitting there to be my best man. He didn't have suit. We were trying to get a jacket for him to wear. That was when my best man drove him. His eyes looking red. I said, Keke, what happened? He married a Belgian wife. On my wedding day, the wife started to fight him. That woman, uh, God forgive her. Are you hearing me? He showed her. I don't even think he understood what a best man is supposed to be. Because his eyes was red. That was not enough. When we went for reception, the car I borrowed for wedding, the car I borrowed for wedding, the one carton of wine that I had for the high table, the driver carried the car and the wine and left. Because the owner of the car sent him somewhere on my wedding day. The car I borrowed. And so when we were set on the high table, there was no wine because I was only able to afford one carton. So we did uh, uh, Coke, Martina, Fanta, <laughs> Martina, <laughs> Sprite. Are you hearing me? I went through it. During the time of toast, where is the wine? I, kept, ah, I was on the high table, I just bored. <laughs> It's not the most you must drink wine on high table, is it? <laughs> God bless the Tommy. He said, you know what? While we're waiting for the wine, let's just open what is on the table. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> they opened the Coke and the, and the malt. And <laughs> thank God. <laughs> we poured it everywhere. Take it. On my wedding day. Are you hearing me? It was after almost the wedding that the car came back. We got home. I said, remove the wine. I said, thank you very much. Praise the Lord. I have traveled before then to many places. The wedding day, there was no money for honeymoon. Huh? There was no money for honeymoon. Where did we go for honeymoon? Gateway Hotel in Ota. Nobody knew. As we were going, because we didn't have enough money for food, we packaged food proper. We was going on honeymoon. We went to Gateway Hotel, Otter. So we would walk around in the evening, walk around in the evening, and we'll go to our room. We'll bring out the flask and dish out food and chew something and mix it and eat. On my wedding day, the honeymoon was for three, four days in Gateway Hotel. But affliction shall not rise a second time. Just a year or two after that, doors began to open. I took a stand for God, and God took a stand for me permanently. I told you, when we went to Abba, my uncle's wife called me privately. He said, he said, please, my son, look at what is happening. Tell us, how much have you spent on this woman? We will give you back the money so that you can have peace. The family is rich. My family is very rich, superbly rich. And so they said, tell us how much. We'll give you back the money so that this woman can go and then we'll give you a wife. I said, ma, I don't need you to post money. And truly on my wedding, they, they, they held back money from me. They held back money from me. You know what? Today, today, if I want to set up a wine factory, I can set it up. Shout out to you. And when the day of visitation came, I told them, I'm going to take you on the right honeymoon. I said, we're going to Canada. I said, I'm taking you to Canada. The appointed time has come for honeymoon. And we went to Canadian embassy. I remember that slim lady there was telling, why are you taking her there during winter? You know the winter. I said, let's go and see what I see. When you are, you are going, you say, honey, buy me perfume. Buy me jewelry. Buy me clothes. Let's her see what you go through to buy it. And they gave her visa, gave me visa. Are you hearing me? We went to Canada. And it wasn't two weeks. I think it was a month we stayed. Yeah. We stayed a month. Honeymoon. The real one. 
just together in an apartment. Ted Kashmari, one of my suppliers, gave us an apartment to stay. And it was beautiful. And it was in that honeymoon that uh, What I Like Books was born. Because I was looking forward to my book and then went to a place and, and so out of the honeymoon came blessings. Praise the Lord. There's too much for you to learn here. And it's not for you to hear to leave you. It is for you to hear and walk with it. Amen. It's not what happens on the wedding day that makes a good marriage. It is what happens before the wedding day that makes a marriage. It's what on my wedding day, Dr. Miwa was in fasting. AD was in fasting. I think Praise George was also in fasting because of the level of attack that was upon us. We had three ministers that were on attack. They were on fasting and praying on our wedding day. Our pastor also the Madibuko. Because then, of course, I was close to him. And that's why when God is for you, you will overcome anything. That's true. We, he ministered communion to us and then made it as a rule in the Revival Assembly. And I said to you now, from now, any wedding in God's family church, there will be communion. Because it's the blood that binds us together. Praise the Lord. Shout hallelujah. Be careful. The information that you are receiving is what God will use to judge you. Because the Bible said at the time of ignorance, God overlooked. He said, but now command all men. And the command is for you to do right and to walk right. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let us serve this God with all our heart. Let us serve God to please him. You will be amazed how things will turn around in your life. In Jesus' precious name.